I was marketing at a, it was like data driven marketing at a production studio. Oh man, I'm falling um, asleep. So it's you know I'm a nerd, so I'm like I'm into it. like Nigerians love to market too. So I was like, oh, this will be really cool. But it transitioned from using all this data to be like, how would we pitch this show? Which audiences do we think will grab? Like things I like you to think be about. Creative in there. Yeah, yeah. There's a it's, there's at least it was very stimulating, but it went to like okay now instead of doing this, we're just gonna upload ads to Twitter. <laughs> And I was like, so I was, I was miserable. Yeah, yeah. So I started sort of, I was like, well, what if what you do at night could be done in the daytime? Yeah. And that period was extra emotional because that's when I wanted someone to read it and give me permission. I was kind of looking for someone to give me permission to go for my dream and be like, hey, you're actually good enough. And, you know, Ava DuVernay always talks about, like, you know, because she was a publicist. So she was publicizing directors and actors in this. And she kind of talks about that period in her life of kind of waiting for someone to lean in and whisper, hey, do you want to be on this side? Right. And, and she was like, and at a certain point, I realized no one gives you permission for your dream. You give yourself permission. Right. And, you know, no one, my, not my parents, not my boss, not my my friends was going to say, hey, it's okay for you to leave your well-paying, stable job with potential career advancement opportunities that will still be stimulating and enjoyable to you for this dream that you've been too scared to admit you actually have for 20 years. No one's going to say that. But it was like once I realized, oh, I, so I just say that to myself? Yeah. I can quit my job? It, you, were, it was like a... Do you remember what it was that got you to that point, that got you to the realization, why it was you realized, I, I got to do this or I'm never going to? I don't know what tipped me over. There wasn't over. a catalyst. I, there wasn't a specific mm -hmm. catalyst. It was more just that... Because we're, we're so programmed, I think. Like, society has lanes and rules and general goalposts. Yeah. And we're kind, life is so crazy that you kind of stick to, we're as humans, we stick to the familiar. It's just psychological. So even me having a revelation, or revelation, that's a word, yep. Even having a revelation. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you should Best know, you're a writer. You're know. <laughs> but like, I even being like, I can quit my job. Yeah. Like, of course, I could I could have quit my job the first day, but again, we don't think those things because I'm like, no. but I have health insurance and a 401k. Is that a thing? You know, you're yeah. sort of looking around, and I think that's part of like growing up. You, you, especially leaving school. If you're kind of, if you're in an education, I guess, focused setting, and you go from like, go to high school, go to college, maybe go to that, you know, it's very easy to to figure out how to move forward in those. But when you're sort of cast out into the world for the first time, and you're like, well, you're the goalpost, but I don't want to be my manager. Right. And okay, I maybe could switch to this department in three years, but that's not, you know, you're like, this is what I want. And oh, I just have to go. You, you know, you kind of be like, oh, there, no one gives you permission as an adult, you give yourself. So it was just sort of like those that clicked. And once it clicked, it was this big revelation because when I was waiting for someone to give me permission, every almost, like, let me see some more of that book would be, I was on cloud nine. Every rejection, I was in, like, the abyss of hell. And, like, oh, I was like, this thing in my day. It was literally, and I, I would go through that in six hours. Like, I was not I, oh. probably a fun person to be around because it would be like, oh, she's so hyper. Oh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> she opened an email, and now she's, like, she's really in it. But then I got to look back at all those as, oh, that's not a, a up and down Look how close you got. Right. Look how close you got knowing nothing. You know, I started doing my research, and I'm like, if you could get this close knowing nothing and having all these other pulls on your time and attention, if you really make this your goal, you really, like, I call it Slither Claw, like, 150% Slither and 50% Ravenclaw. I was like, you open that Excel sheet, you make a plan, you look at the data, you do this. You. It became less scary because I went from if to when. And if you go from if to when, then every obstacle you face, every rejection you face is like a lesson to help pivot you in the right direction. But if you're if, every rejection is like, well, is it ever going to You unravel every single time. So that's what I tell people a lot. Or like, especially when I talk to students or creatives with dreams, I'm like, is if you give yourself permission and you decide it will happen, you will then be able to get there. But if you're if you don't, you're always gonna changing that perspective. It kind of helps you yeah. uh, get the armor that you're gonna need to endure exactly. all those things and that come along. Exactly, and it's fuel. Because again, sixty three rejections, you learn a lot. The biggest thing, the common thread, was people are like, "You have something, but I couldn't sell this book." And I'm like, hmm, is there a list of books that sell well? Let me figure out why the thing I wrote isn't marketable today. You know, you, I have a literal clear place to go. Um, and I found out it was because my first book was a love letter to Harry Potter. 
And so it was like, oh, it's something, but that's not what people want to read today. People want to read epic fantasies. Well, I love epic fantasies. Let me write an epic fantasy. 